Hi, so I'm outside shooting and in the area where I live we have a pigeon problem and my neighbours all have pigeons covering their roofs. All the pigeons literally nest underneath the solar panels and all the houses here have solar panels to generate power and these pigeons just nest underneath and breed more and more pigeons. So the neighbours come and saw me and said, Stephen you're a pretty good shot, can you do something about pigeons? And I said sure because back in 1984 when I won the Australian 14 year old for 14 year olds the Australian championship I can shoot pigeons off roofs no problem at all so the big question was which bow am I going to choose to shoot pigeons off the roof with now this is a big thing because you know I'm a big PSC fan and I shoot really well with the PSC Supra but that's a target bow I didn't really want to bust expensive arrows shooting at um, pigeons on a roof. So I was thinking what bow do I choose? Now, there's lots of good bows to choose from, but the first bow that came to mind was the Oneida. And that's purely from the Arrow TV series because I saw what he can do with the Oneida. Except the price point, $2,000. It's like to shoot some pigeons off the roof. Then this bow came up. Now this is the RPM, RPM something or other, <laughs> I think it's called the RPM Nitro. Now RPM, American company, make a whole bunch of bows for bow fishing specifically. They do recurves and compounds and these look like an Oneida. So I thought let's just take a look at this bow, see what it shoots like, see if it compares to the Oneida because it's, what, less than half price? And let's see if I can shoot pigeons off the roof with one of these. So let's open up and have a look what's inside. Okay, so they come really well wrapped. Um, come with an instruction manual. Now there's three or four models in this bow and it gets a bit confusing for me. So there's the Nitro, then the Nitro XL. Now if I get it wrong, you know, forgive me. But basically there's one bow. One bow, two sets of limbs. So a 55 and a 75 set of limbs. Now they call the 75 pound set of limbs a nitro mag, is it? To me it's the same bow. It is the same bow and all they do is change the outside limbs. I'll show you what they change. Then they have two draw lengths. The long one and the standard size draw length. And I think they give that a different name called the XL. So I think there's a nitro then nitro XL. So basically the bow comes in two draw lengths and two poundages. So let's just take a look. Now, it comes with these little things. These are modules to change the draw length and the let off. And I'm going to show you how to adjust that. It comes with some Allen keys. And let's unwrap this and let's just take a look what's inside. Now, I haven't shot one of these. Um, I got a few in from RPM. But shipping to Australia is a pain in the butt because the bow is so long it doesn't make it through the postage. So this is the bow here um, and you can see it looks like an Oneida. It's the Oneida that you're familiar with back from the days of the Oneida um, Aeroforce, the Oneida Phantom, the Oneida Strike Eagle and hopefully I can pull some pictures of those. This looks very similar. Now the way this works compared to a normal conventional bow, a normal conventional bow you put a cam system on the limb and the cam forces the limbs to compress. What they've done with the Oneida or the RPM, this is a lever. It doesn't flex, this is not a limb like you see on a recurve, this does not move, it's fixed. And what this does is by moving this, because it's pivoted here, it forces this thing here. This is actually the limb, this is the power limb. So if you want to change the draw length, this limb here, the outside limb, comes in two sizes. A standard size and a longer size. Longer size makes the bow longer and makes the draw length longer. These limbs here come in two poundages. One's a 50 or a 55 and one's a 75. 75 being thicker. And it's that simple. So let's just take a look at this bow. This is the 55 to 75 um, poundage model. Now to me this looks, this looks like the Oneida I'm familiar with going back from the 1980s um, except this thing here now from my understanding this part here was an aftermarket part 
which they used to fit tornadoes. And as you pull back this limb here, this limb hits this stop here to, to form a stop. Now the original Oneidas had a stop built into the cam on the outside which you used to hit here. The new Oneidas, like the Oneida Kestrel, has got a stop built into this um, timing wheel here and it hits the riser. Now the original Oneida Aeroforce had a single cam in the middle here. They then split it out in the Kestrel and the Phoenix to be twin cams. Now my understanding is the way RPM has done their twin cams is a little bit different to a NIDA, the way they've done theirs. That being here, I'm going to zoom in, I think you can see it's done on a, like on a hexagonal, like a, is that called a hexagonal, so a little triangle shape. With the NIDA I think it's done on a round wheel, um, so it's like a bushing going straight through and they use a Allen key to lock it in place. And for me, I had a problem with the Oneidas where that Allen key, if it comes loose, then these, these, two, these two cams can slide independently. It's my understanding that this cannot occur with these here because it's done on a hex system. Besides that, the cables are both steel. That's pretty standard. Um, the timing cable runs down the center of the handle. That's pretty standard. Um, these things on the Oneida are generally plastic. Here, they're metal. This little screw here is done to tighten up your timing system. You don't want your timing here to be basically too tight. You, you just want it to be like the right amount of tension. When you say the right amount, if it's too tight, you'll pull out the hand grip here. Too loose, like if they were sloppy, these are going to basically move independent. So just kind of enough tension that they move comfortably between each other. Now the draw length, to change the draw length or the let off, you've got to change these little modules. These modules are in here, these little black things. Now the modules on the RPM is different to the Oneida. The Oneida has two tracks for the module. However, this cam only runs on one track. So what RPM have done is on their modules, which look exactly the same, it's just one, one, one module. No grooves down it. But besides that, it looks pretty much the same. So my thoughts about this bow without just how it looks and how it feels. The anodizing it only comes in black. Um, now I think that is a bit unfortunate. Is that the right word? I think this bow should come in camo. I think the silver on the cams here, they should be black. I think the limb pocket should be black. Um, that's just my personal view. What do you think? I think the edges here are too sharp, um, here and like around here and here. I think the edges on the edge here, these should be curved um, rather than being straight. Um, I like the limb pockets, they're all steel, they, they're nice. Up here on the Niter that's plastic, it's steel here, that's good. The, limb, the limbs on the, on the RPM is a wood. I think it's a wood finish. I think it's a wood laminate, which is the way the original Oneidas were made. The new Oneidas are made out with a plastic material on the outboard limbs, and I think it makes the bow a little bit noisier than the original wood limbs. So I'm going to be interested to see how this shoots. Um, so things I like about this bow and things I don't. Um, I don't like the fact that they've machined out here, and they've just left these two little, these two little things here with a sight bolts onto. The reason I don't like that is a lot of the sights have holes because you can convert it from left to right and when you're fitting into these holes here sometimes the sight won't line up square. So I think the sight here should be completely flat um, rather than machined out. Um, I like the fact here the pivot's built into the riser. I think that's quite good. Um, so overall, I think the bow looks okay. I just think the finishing touches could be improved, but this is personal, personal preference about how you think a bow should look. And obviously when RPM designed this bow, this is the look they liked, the silver and black. But it kind of does look, does it look as cool as the bow in Arrow? I don't know. Um, I don't think so. I think there's some things which look a bit cooler in the bow that's shot in the Arrow TV series. Um, 
Okay, so let's talk about how we change poundage on this bow. Now to change poundage, what you want to do is you want to measure the distance from there to there and there to there. This, the distance from there to there and there to there needs to be identical. And you must loosen off the timing screw, which is there. Loosening that makes these cams on the outside run independently to this timing system here. When you increase or decrease the poundage, if you don't loosen this screw here, these cams will move in and out. And basically, the tension on the timing, one side will get really hard and one side will be loose. You want the timing cables to have no pressure on them whatsoever. So you must loosen this screw here and wind up or down the bow. Once the distance from there to there, there to there is the same, then you relock this screw here and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so, so I'm here to, to adjust the RPM. I want to show you how to do this because it's really, really important. Now with the RPM system, same as the Oneida system, you have this um, timing cable here, which connects the top and bottom cams. Now these cables normally don't have a lot of tension on them. You can see there's a little bit of tension. You should be able to flex your finger on them. But you want the left side and the right side to have the same amount of tension. And the way you do that, there's a locking screw just there. You've got to loosen that off. Got to make sure you get the right Allen key. You loosen that off. So that's loosened. Now you only do it at the top. Down the bottom you'll see there's no locking key. There, that's actually set in. So here it's loose. And on the back of it, hopefully you can see there's a little... Just in here. Just there, just there, there's a little plate which locks it together. Now with these two being timed, the distance from there to there, from there to there and there to there should be the same. Let's just check. This is straight out of the factory. So I grab a steel ruler and steel rulers are great for this. And the distance on the top to the string is 12 and a half and on the bottom it's 12. So it's, at the moment it's a little bit out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind down this bow poundage because I want to get it, this is a 75 pound bow and I want to get down to 60. So let's just start winding this down. Now can you do it without loosening the timing? You can, but what's going to happen is the tension is going to increase on one timing cable and not the other. So one timing cable is going to become loose and the other is going to become really tight. And then if you shot with it like that you'd actually break and you'd stretch the you'd stretch the string. So one, two, three turns. Now you're going to see here, see how this has moved in? So here the distance is now 13 and a half. So decreasing the poundage increases the distance on the top. So I'm going to do the bottom. One, two, three. Nice. We need, we know the distance we need to get to. It's 12 and a half at the top, under 12 at the bottom. So decreasing this increases this. So I want to decrease the bottom a little bit more. So let's go half. Twelve, twelve and a quarter, and twelve and a quarter. So that's spot on. So once it's spot on, now we just want, um, lock this back in place. So we tighten this back up. So you can see here the tension now on both sides will be the same because there's no tension on that timing cable. So we lock that back in. Sometimes you got to put your finger on the other side to get it tight. Now that's the bow physically timed. So now what I want to do is I just want to check the poundage. The first time you pull back a bow when it's new out of the packet it creaks and it 
which is why when I sell a bow, I always pull it back first myself. Now you can see this bow is coming in miles too short for me. Like it's not even close. So now we're going to have to change the draw length, which is really unfortunate because I was just hoping I could pull this out of the box and shoot it. Actually what's happening, these bows have got draw stops and this draw stop here is hitting and the top one's not. So I'm just going to show you, hopefully you can see that. The bottom one is hitting there and the top one's not. The top one's got a bit of play. So um, I'm going to just move the bottom one in a little bit. This design here was an aftermarket and they fitted them to the Oneidas. So it's not what Oneida uses. Oneida used, on the original um, Oneida Aeroforce, they had a draw stop which bolted onto these and it hit the arms. Then in the later versions, they had another one which was connected to the timing here as a circle and it actually hit the riser as you draw it back as a draw stop. Now to me that I kind of, I'm just going to describe the draw cycle of this bow. It starts off pretty light and now I kind of feel like the valley's there and then here it's increasing. So to me this feels miles too short. Now these bows come with a packet of modules and to replace the modules, there's four modules you need to replace. There's a little Allen keys there. Um, on each of the modules you loosen this allen key and you replace it with the appropriate module. Now what we're going to do is we're going to see which modules fitted on here and that's that thing there making a noise. Um, we're going to see what module is fitted on here, get the appropriate module. I'm going to go, I want to see how well I shoot with this so I'm thinking I'm going to go for a higher let off maybe 80%. This feels like it's on about 50-60% let off at the moment. In fact it feels worse than that because it feels like it's increasing. Good for finger shooting. Um, but I really want this back further and then we can sort of see how well I shoot with it for target. So let's see what module it's got. Okay so this bow I'm going to guess is the medium which is 28 to 30 so I'm looking for a um, really hard it's really hard to know which module to fit so D is A B C D so I'm going to guess I need a G so let's see what module is on here okay so replace the modules little on key in the side there's no part of this cable touching the module so you loosen it here on the side. I'm not going to do a four, but I'll do one for the camera. So you loosen that. You don't need to loosen it much. And you just push the top of the module. Just push it there. And it just slides out. And it should be easier said than done. There. Right, so just... And that's what the module looks like there. Now this is a... My eyes are gone as I get older. Oh. This was an F. Maybe you can see that. It's an F. Okay, so that was a 55% let off module and it felt like 55. So they fitted 55 standard which I think, okay, this is aimed at the bow fishing market, but I don't know how many of these are selling to bow fishers and how many they're just selling to normal archers. I don't know. Maybe it's a different environment, Australia versus America, but to me, this should come fitted with the 80% let off. So it should be fitted with the D, I think, out of the factory, and, it, and I'm going to fit it with the G. So now we're just going to go through this packet and find G's. Okay, so there's the G. And you can see it comes with that little thing saying long. Now this bow is meant to be 30 inches. It's 
It's meant to be 28 to 30 inches in adjustment. Now to me, that bow was meant to be 29 and that felt way too short for me. I'm 28 and a half. So I'm gonna be interested to see how these feel on the bow. So with that, give me a couple of seconds and let's replace these modules. So I've just fitted the, I think it's the G modules to all four of them. Probably took me about three minutes to do it. So I'm hoping the draw length and let off feels good. So this is my first draw. Um, so let's see how it feels. Now I want to talk about the string. This string feels skinny here. Um, just with my fingers. I'm just grabbing a normal arrow. And it is the standard size, but it feels skinny. So that's weird. Kind of. Now this draw length is better. I still can't really feel where it's hitting the valley. It's, I don't know if these stops are getting in the way or, like when I drew, when I used to shoot a NIDA, you could feel the let off. You could, it just, this should be the same. This should be the same, but it feels different. It could be my imagination. So here it kind of is loose, peaking, 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 valley, and I feel like, I feel like what's happening when it's getting in the valley, these things here are stopping it. Um, so. It's still a smooth bow to draw. I just feel like the Oneida had more, had a higher let off when it got back there. And even though this says it's 80%, it doesn't feel like 80%. It feels more like, feels more like 70%. That's what it feels like. Still comfortable and like I'm happy to shoot it. So with that, what I'm gonna do is gonna fit an arrow rest to this. We're gonna fit sights to this. And let's check the poundage on this bow. Um, so, let me fit an RS and some sights and let's see how it goes. Okay, so I've now fitted the sight and the RS and the D loop to this bow. So I want to check the poundage, but the first thing I want to show you is is my point where they where they go to um, mount the sight here. It's machined out. You can see there it's machined out. Now what this has caused is this sight here to be angled, and I don't know if you can see it from here, but here is in further than is here so the sight's actually angled like that now that's not ideal because what that's done is made this housing angle out here so instead of being straight with the riser it's actually angled out here that's going to affect your heel shots and stuff so just a now if your sight see how these things are machined out the inside now if they're not machined out on the other side they'll be fine but where they've just got two knobs coming out, they're actually digging in, causing the angle to come to hit, which is a bit of a problem. So now I wound this boat down three pounds, uh, locked it back in. Um, so we're gonna check the poundage on this boat. So it's on 54 pounds. So we're gonna to have to wind that up a little bit. So probably one turn. Now, so was this bow 75 pounds to start with? Because if I wound down three turns, so we're saying each turn is seven pounds? I don't think so. I don't think this bow came in at 75 pounds. Okay, so what does it feel like for a 54, 54 pound bow? It's, um, it feels light for a 54, but it does, it's smooth. The draw cycle is smooth. Um, so I'm going to wind this up to 60 now. Um, hopefully put it through a chronograph. Um, the weather's been atrocious. So this video is taking forever. Um, put it through a chronograph and shoot some scores with this and see how this bow performs. But overall, how is this bow? I've shot all the Oneidas on the market, I think, that have been produced, all the lever bows that have been produced. Shot the United Air Force, the MR80, the Kestrel, the Phoenix, 
The Phoenix is definitely quieter than the Kestrel because it's got the twin stops. Um, and I'm going to say I like the Phoenix probably best of all to shoot. However, I had the issue with the cams coming out of sync. So one side moved to the left and that kind of put me off that bow. So the United Air Force, obviously a bulletproof bow, um, still available today on eBay secondhand and they still get really good money for them. But that bow had a fairly chunky grip um, and it was fairly heavy. Now I'm going to say this grip here is fairly square here and I kind of like this bit here to be a bit narrower um, the plastic itself is like a sticky plastic here um, which is maybe what you want if you're bow fishing I think it's a bit sticky for um, just regular shooting I prefer a harder plastic but overall at half the price of an Oneida I think it's not bad, um, so let's shoot it through, through a chronograph, adjust the poundage, and let's see how I shoot with it. Okay, so I'm here. For, so I'm here for my first shot with the RPM Nitro. So I've set the bow up, D loop RRS the sight, which you know I've said I'm not happy with. Um, so let's have a shot. Now this is the very first shot I've taken. So if it goes bang, well. I do most of my stuff live, I don't do retakes, as you probably know if you're watching my videos. Um, so let's have a look how this thing goes and see what it feels like. Whoa! As you can see that was uh, this slipped down. <laughs> Uh, that felt like a... <laughs> Did I look scared? I felt scared. I honestly felt scared. It reminded me when I did the review with the Kestrel and... Um, it was a Kestrel, the Oneida Kestrel. And I think someone said the knocking point came off in the shot. It was like, bang! It was like, gee whiz. Um, it felt... <laughs> It's not that if it's not that this thing feels fast as far as vibration. There's no vibration in the shot shot at all. It's um there's no it just maybe it's noisy. Because there's no vibration when you shoot the bow. It's kind of unexpected. Now I'm expecting a bigger value when I get back there because I put the big modules on this, the big 80%. And I feel like it's not getting into the valley. Uh, whether that's because of these draw stops on the limbs or not, I don't know. But it just doesn't feel like a big let off. Let's just have another shot. And like this part here, it feels like spongy. So the start of the draw cycle feels a bit spongy. So I wouldn't expect a big speed out of this. And unfortunately I can't chronograph it because the weather outside. Honestly, the weather is just a storm, and it's been a storm. Like, we've had a couple of good days in between, but obviously I've been doing this video for, this bow video for a few weeks, and it's just been terrible. It's winter, and it gets really dark quickly. So I think, I think the, like it wasn't so scary the second shot. I think the speed of this bow, as far as its noise, um, I just, yeah, I think it's just a little bit. It's like a, um, I mean, you can hear it come off. So with that, I think I'll go, I think I'll set a sight setting at 18 and let's see how I shoot at 18. Like I enjoy shooting an Ida. Um, and this isn't an Ida, this is an RPM. But I mean, I enjoy shooting a lever bow like this. Is it better than a normal bow? I'm gonna say no, it's not better. The draw cycle's smoother. It's just different, it's a... Uh... Now I used to shoot competition with my Ida and I probably said that before in the video, but it's been, like I said, two, th two, three weeks since I started this video.
let's take this back to 18. I'm really interested to see how well I shoot with it. So when I did shoot an Anida bow for competition, I shot okay with it. Um, so I'm going to say other compound bows have advanced a long way in 20 years. You know, they've really come a long way with the parallel limbs, new cam designs, the new strings. It's been a big, big improvement. The lever design on the um, RPM Nitro and the other Oneida bows to me is very, very similar. I think the string stops on the Phoenix definitely make the bow quieter. And I had two people in the shop shooting one shooting the Kestrel and one shooting the uh, Phoenix. The Phoenix is definitely a quieter bow and definitely quieter than this. Um, but for the price point, we're talking a bow which is less than half the price of the Oneida. And this gets back to whether you're on a budget to buy a bow or whether money is no object. If money is no object, then I'm going to say the Oneida Phoenix is a better bow as far as quietness to shoot than this. But if you are on a budget, this is not bad. Um, and I, like I'd be on a budget for this type of bow because you're probably going to use this for bow fishing. You might be shooting it for finger shooting. It's probably going to be a second bow. And you're probably getting it because it kind of looks cool. I think this the silver bit should be black. Um, there's To me, there's some things about this bow that are better than the Oneida. Um, there's some things on this bow that I would like to see. There's things on the Oneida I'd like to see on this bow, like the stop on the timing wheel. Um, but overall it's pretty good um, so how do you quieten this bow down make it quieter um, you can put pads on the back of the limbs some silences here do stuff and puff silences are really good on the string on these bows it's a bit like a recurve quietening this to a recurve but you're not going to get this bow I don't think you're going to get this bow as quiet as a normal compound bow but I definitely don't mind shooting this bow it's um like if I wanted a bow, like if I wanted to go up and shoot a field course and I just wanted something different, this bow would be right up the alley. Kind of looks cool hanging on the wall. Um, I like the fact that these are, I don't know if you can see it, on a hexagonal system. That's definitely better than the Anaya where you've just got that one grub screw coming in. So there, this bow has got advantages over the Oneida. Um, the grip I'm finding comfortable. So with that, let's take this back to 18 and see how I shoot. Okay, so normally I have another camera set up down the other end, but it won't turn on. So I don't know if it's a flat battery. Sometimes that camera doesn't like working. So I saw that out afterwards, but I want to shoot these arrows. Um, I'll show you the results at the end. I've only shot two arrows cider, which you'll be able to see in the target. Um, one was in the goal, they were a little bit out to the left, so I've moved my sight to the left. Uh, one was in the goal, one was a high eight, so I moved my sight. So let's just see how this goes. Now I think I'm wobbling around a little bit more with this bow than I do a normal bow. When I'm actually holding the bow up, this bow feels extremely light, and I feel like I'm wobbling around more than a normal compound. So let's just see how I go. Now I'm finding the grip, the grip is wider than a normal compound, so I'm finding that more, less consistent than a normal compound to aim with. So, square, like it's, I haven't shot a group, I've only shot two arrows, so um, we'll see how that sort of pans out. I'm finding the, at holding point, I'm finding this draw length too long for me, so I definitely fit a shorter module to this bow. Um, but we're going to just stick with this for the purpose of the review. So it, it may be better at a shorter draw length for me for grouping. I think they're all shooting out to the right. I didn't make, I don't know where they're actually shooting. But we'll shoot, I'm just more interested to see what the groups look like. 
it's definitely it does remind me of the igniters to shoot it's except with the igniter i felt like i had a huge let off when i got to the back i'm not feeling that huge let off with this bow If I feel like I'm using all my back tension to hold this thing back. Um, with bows with 90% you know, let off, you hold it back and you're holding two or three pounds and let the bow down, you can just, you've just you kind of got to push it forward. Um, it's not the case with this bow, you've got to be pulling it the whole time. That one, I felt like I shot that one low, but I think it went in all right. In I think it went where the other arrows are. When I shoot, it feels like it's pushing out like that. I don't know if you can see in the video, but it definitely feels like it's doing that because I feel like I'm getting more pressure on this point than at this point here on the grip. Um, and you can see the natural push of this bow is backwards, even if I'm balancing the bow here. So you definitely want a front stabilizer with this bow to weigh this bow down because you don't want this backwards, you want forward, you want it pushing forward. So the natural balance of this bow, see even when you hold the bow, uh, see that put the balance, that put the balance dead in the middle. So this bow is balanced straight in the middle of the um, arrow rest and that's probably dead in the middle of the string to keep these limbs all symmetrical but you definitely need more weight down the bottom let me just fire one more and let's go down and see where those arrows are look it's much as much as I enjoy shooting this bow, there's an equal part of me which dislikes shooting this bow, if that makes any sense at all. Because a normal compound bow, and I'm just going to grab my Supra, and you're going, oh, you're comparing to PSC again. Yep. Uh, <laughs> like this, the Supra is just a lovely bow to shoot. And with any modern compound bow, and even the Chinese compound bows, a lovely bow to shoot. This is very much back to the first deniers it feels the same as the first deniers back in the 1980s nothing wrong with it it's a nice smooth draw you can't feel the valley you can't feel the let off much easier on your shoulders like with a normal compound bow they really hurt your shoulders getting through the peak and the big valley and then if you've got to let the thing down all oh, that really hurts this you you get no shoulder pain at all it's much easier on the body um which is why a knight has got a huge following. And when I say huge following, you'll see people keep their bows. They don't get rid of a knight as like they do a normal bow company. I'm gonna say there's no one shooting a 20 year old PSE or a 20 year old Hoy. And yes, I do have one customer who comes to my store who does shoot a 20 year old compound because he likes his 20 year old compound. But with the Niders, there are plenty of people who still shoot the old 20, 30 year old Anida bows. And that's what this is. This is a bow that, you know, in 20 years time, it'll still be fine. It'll still be a... It will still be a unique compound bow to shoot. It'll still have a nostalgic view about it. And they're pretty robust. You know, they're, uh, you don't have to worry about cam leaning, cam timing, and you don't have to worry about any of that. You just shoot it. Um, and there are so many people who are worried about, you know, cam timing and shimming your wheels left and right and all that sort of stuff. There's so many people are worried about that stuff. With this, you just go shoot it. Um, now let's go down and see what the groups are like. Okay, so I'm up here at the target. And what interests me about this group, obviously all my arrows are out to the side here, um, which is 
I thought I only moved my side a little bit because you can see where I shot my first nine just there. Um, and then I moved my sights out a little bit to the left, which is obviously pushed my arrows out to the right. I didn't think I moved my sight that much. And that's the whole push of going for a micro adjust sight. So you know, you just move it a little bit. It's a bit quicker to set up a micro adjust sight than a normal sight for that reason. Now, left and right, my arrows are amazingly in line. Now, when I was shooting the shots, it felt like I was talking and I was always looking at this string down the riser, the same as I do when I shoot a recurve, my target recurve bow, because I felt like I was talking. I felt like I was doing this with the riser because of the grip width. So I was always lining this up with that because I felt like I was going to get massive left and right um, adjustment. Now I don't normally do that with the, with modern compound bows because the grip's so narrow. It just it just I've never even thought of it before. But with this, I felt like I was getting torque with the grip. Uh, but obviously, through lining up that string, I wasn't getting it because all those arrows are smack in a line. Now there's the up and down height adjustment is not good. Uh, you can see it's it's. Um, the width of my hand so basically it's going from the top of the nine to the bottom of the five in in height adjustment now I did say it in some of the shots that some of the shots felt like they were dropping low and I felt like what was happening was my pressure point here was a little bit different I felt like I was doing this and getting some low shots I was shaking around more than I do with a normal compound bow with this bow because the bow felt so light and I felt like I was holding a lot of poundage back there. But this group, uh, not in, I'm not impressed with it. Um, I'm going to say I shot better with my target recurve last night, outdoors in the wind than with this. Um, I've got more left and right adjustment because I'm shooting fingers with the recurve, but the height adjustment was better with my recurve than this bow. Now, I'm going to say with the height adjustment that I felt there, I would, I would think it would get better with the stabilizer to, to get this pointing down, and I think um, more constant use of it to get used to this grip, uh, because I think a lot of that was grip. Now, the other thing it could be, um, and you probably think I'm making excuses, I'm not, the draw length, because I'm not locking it in correctly, that's going to give me height adjustment. So generally, if you're getting left and right adjustment, it can be position on your face, or you're pulling away from your face. Now I tend to be pretty good as far as pulling away. I tend to pull straight through. Um, so I'm getting left, I'm getting up and down adjustment. So that's either through my grip here, changing my position, or I could be pulling back, not getting that dead draw stop that I normally get with a compound. So my normal compounds I shoot, when I pull straight through, they lock into place. I don't feel like I'm getting this dead lock with these limbs. I'm finding a little bit spongy back there. Um, so that would contribute to the up and down movement with a recurve bow that I shoot for target. I'm using a clicker, so it goes click and I shoot, so I'm getting that exact draw length, exact poundage. So I think here I'm probably getting a little bit of poundage variation. The lower one's obviously a little bit less poundage. The like there's some nice little groups there in the middle. Um, I think I would shoot better with this the more I got to shoot it. I think I'd shoot better with it at a shorter draw length um, to lock in that poundage a little bit more because I felt like it was a little bit long. So my overall thoughts on this bow, I think it's pretty good. I'm going to say that if the Oneida didn't have the issue with the cams coming out of sync that I, that I had with the ones I had in my store, then I would prefer the Oneida over the RPM. However, the price point of this makes it extremely attractive compared to the Oneida. I think the metal parts on this bow, that's metal, this is metal, this is metal, these things are metal, that makes this extremely attractive about this compared to the Oneida. The Oneida's got lots of plastic stuff. Uh, the price point on this bow makes this bow extremely attractive. Now, if you're going to have one compound bow, I'm going to suggest probably not this bow unless you're going to use it for bow fishing or you want to shoot fingers and if you're going to shoot fingers this would be right up the top of my list as far as bows to consider because you cannot derail this bow it's a bulletproof bow with these limbs 
So if I was finger shooting, bow fishing, we generally shoot with fingers. This bow is up the top of my list. I uh, love all the modules that come with it to change the let offs for finger shooting. It's great. Um, I've already mentioned the parts about this bow I don't like. So overall, I'm like, I think the price is good. I think a night is a little bit overpriced these days in the $2,000 price range in Australia. Um, but I think this is pretty well priced. Now I'm going to talk about customer service when dealing with the people at the RPM. I think it's a family business. Um, they were very helpful on the phone and emails. They were pretty responsive to it. Um, like I said, I have problems getting them into Australia because of the size of the bows exceeds the shipping regulations. But um, I think they were pretty good. I had issues with dealing with Anida um, because it's owned by, well, I think the issue is it's owned by like Bass Pro. It's owned by the kid the kid, the son of the owner of Bass Pro, I think. Um, so I think the person, the people running it are just employees. And when I say just employees, they don't have the same passion for the people as the owners of the company to look after the product. And I'm not trashing them. I probably am by saying that. I just felt more customer service with RPM than I did with Anida. I felt they were more committed to the customer. Um, definitely more active um, the spare parts for this you can go to g-strings um, to get all the cables in pretty colors if you wanted I think they do this string I think they do these um, I think RPM do custom options with their bows where they color the riser and color these parts um, I think that is cost prohibitive I oh, this is this was the least uh, <laughs> I don't know anyway um, so overall, I think it's pretty good. If you're looking for a lever bow, I would be going for this over the Oneida, just purely on price point. And it gets you into the sport. It gets you into trying a Oneida, into trying a lever bow to see if you like it. And the price point is half the price. So I'm like, if you decide you don't like it, it's not going to cost you much because you go and sell it and it's okay. Now in the reviews I did, in the reviews I did, the reviews I read on this bow, um, comparing it to Oneida's, people viewed this bow very favorably compared to the Oneida bows um, I think I've already said I think the the Oneida Phoenix is a better bow to shoot than this but um, overall I think this would be a very robust bow I don't see this bow having any issues as far as things breaking down but I haven't that this was the first time I shot this bow um, so overall I think it's pretty good um, I think there's bits they could clean up and finish you know like I'd like a camo option I'd like an all black option I'd like the sharp edges to be gone I'd, I'd like this all to be square but overall pretty good um, machine riser what else could you ask for well, price points good I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies um, unfortunately I couldn't do it through the chronograph because of the weather outside anyway the more you shoot the better you shoot um, and yeah Enjoy your shooting when you're doing it. Thanks for watching. Bye.